Hi, my name is Amod Singhal. I'm an IT consultant who enjoys making complex technical material easy to understand. This is one in a series of SQL tutorials for business analysts and report writers. In this tutorial, I'll explain the logical execution order of clauses in SQL's select statement. Many mistakes made by novice SQL programmers can be traced to not understanding the implications of the logical order in which the different clauses of SQL select statement are executed. Let's start with an example. Consider the orders table shown here. Suppose we want to get the details for orders prior to year 2018. The only 2018 order in the orders table is highlighted in yellow. Say we try the query, expecting it to return. What we get instead is an error message saying column name order year is invalid. The explanation lies in the fact that in the logical execution order, the WHERE clause is executed before the SELECT clause. So, the alias order year defined in the SELECT clause is unknown in the WHERE clause, resulting in the error message. Let's examine the execution order of the clauses in the SELECT state. First of all, note that in this tutorial, the word SELECT will be used in three different contexts. The SELECT statement, the SELECT clause of the SELECT statement, and finally, the SELECT phase of the execution. The SELECT statement has six most frequently used clauses. The clauses are written in this order. However, logically, the SELECT clause is executed after, from, WHERE, GROUP BY, and HAVING clauses. An easy way to remember the logical execution order is to note that it follows the sequence in which the clauses are written except that the SELECT clause moves down between HAVING and ORDER BY. And yes, there is a method to this madness. The SELECT statement must do three things. One, identify the data of interest. The FROM clause tells the SQL engine which table the data lives in. And the WHERE clause tells it which rows of data we care about. Two, specify aggregations, if any. The GROUP BY clause combines multiple rows, and the HAVING clause specifies which aggregated rows of data we care about. Three, return the result, sorted if desired. The SELECT clause specifies which attributes to return in the result, and the ORDER BY specifies how the result set is sorted. To better understand the execution order and its implications, let's look at some examples. The orders table with data shown below will be used in tutorial examples. This table has four columns, order ID, customer ID, order date, and order amount. It has four customers, Amy, Bob, Kathy, and David. This is not the best example of a relational table, but it will serve our purpose. Note that the only 2018 order is order ID 6 for Bob. Next, we'll write a simple query to output the desired attributes from orders table 
excluding the 2018 order. Here is the query. This query asks for data from the orders table, taking into account only rows where the year part of order date is prior to 2018. Sure enough, the query produces the expected result. All rows of orders table except row 6 are output. Note the earliest order year which is defined in the SELECT clause. Why did the SQL engine accept alias order year in the ORDER BY clause, but not in the WHERE clause in our earlier example? Consider the execution sequence of SELECT, WHERE, and ORDER BY. The WHERE clause is the first to execute. Alias order year is not defined yet. The SELECT clause is next. It defines alias order year as the year portion of order date. So subsequently, when the order by clause is executed, alias order year is known to the SQL engine, which brings us to the following rule. Alias assigned in the select clause does not exist for from, where, group by and having clauses. The second example includes group by and having clauses. In this query, we are grouping orders table rows by customer ID. So the output will have one row per customer ID. Let's take a look at what to expect. First to execute are the from and where clauses. Similar to example one, from orders identifies the orders table as the data source, and the where clause restricts the underlying data to only those rows where order year is earlier than or less than 2018. This filters out the highlighted row in the table as before. Now the group by clause is executed, creating one group of rows for each customer ID. This has some implications. First, this means that any attribute you want to output in the SELECT clause must be guaranteed to have exactly one value for each group. So, for instance, you cannot output order date because there can be multiple values of order date per group. This observation is stated as the following rule. All expressions in phases executed after group by, that is, having, select, and order by, must be guaranteed to return a single value per group. Once the group by phase executes, individual rows are not available to having, select, and order by clauses. Each group is ultimately represented by a single row in the final query. Note that this limitation can be overcome by using the OVER clause, which permits both the individual row and aggregate data on the same row of output. Next, the having clause executes. This results in removing the data groups for Bob and David because each of these groups of rows has at least one order above $20. Finally, the select and order by clauses will be executed. The SELECT clause specifies the three pieces of data for each group of customers that we're interested in. Customer ID, max order year, and min amount. We want the output to be sorted by max order year. And here is the final result.
Before going on to the recap, I want to mention the concept of all at once operations. If you have done computer programming, you are likely used to the idea that statements are executed from left to right. This does not apply to SQL statements except for the join clause. All at once processing is the reason why the alias order year defined in the select statement cannot be referenced in the same statement. Another aspect of all at once processing is that it can cause a divide by zero error. In this example, thinking that the WHERE clause executes left to right, you may believe incorrectly that for item ID 2, finding that the condition discount not equal to zero fails, the SQL server will short circuit, i.e. it will not bother to evaluate the ratio price over discount, thus avoiding a divide by zero. However, because the SQL engine is free to evaluate the two expressions in any order it chooses, a divide by zero error is possible. For this scenario, a simple workaround is to rewrite the query as shown. Finally, to recap, there are five takeaways. One, the clauses of the SELECT statement are logically executed in the same order as written, except that the SELECT clause executes between HAVING and ORDER BY. 2. An alias declared in a later phase, for example, the SELECT phase, is unknown in an earlier phase, for example, FROM, but known to a later phase, such as the ORDER BY. The GROUP BY clause makes the SQL engine view the underlying data in terms of groups. Hence, later execution phases, having SELECT and ORDER BY, can only reference attributes guaranteed to have exactly one value per group, i.e. aggregates and the attribute or attributes used in the GROUP BY. Four, all expressions in phases executed after group by, having select and order by, must guarantee to return a single value per group. And finally, five, all expressions that appear in the same logical query processing phase are evaluated as if at a single point in time, which may cause divide by zero error. The exception to this rule is joins, which are executed from left to right. And that ends this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and look forward to your feedback and comments. Thank you.